disease of chili. So, before discussing about the disease of chili, let us see the brief introduction of chili. So, chili which is botanically known as capsicum annuum is one of the most important crops that is grown for use as a vegetable and a condiment. So, it is extensively grown in tropical Asia and equatorial America for the pungent fruits and the India is one of the major produ producer and exporter of chilies earning a lot of foreign exchange. However, the production of chili is gradually reduced because of a number of biotic constraints and among the different biotic constraints, the diseases caused by different fungi, bacteria and viruses, they are of utmost importance. So, today we will be discussing about different diseases that is caused by fungi, bacteria and viruses. Among the fungal diseases, if you observe, the damping off is one of the major diseases that can be seen in the nursery beds. Then dieback and fruit rot, and you have the coenophora blight or powdery mildew, cercospora leaf spot, and you have a bacterial disease that is caused by Xanthomonas campestris pathorvescitoria, which is known as bacterial leaf spot. And a number of viruses are known to be causing a major damage to the chili crop, and this disease, which is a complex disease, is caused by different viruses. That's why that disease is known as mosaic complex. So, let us discuss about each disease in detail. First, we will be discussing about an important disease that is a fungal disease of chili which is known as damping off. So, the damping off is caused by a member of oomycet and this is an important disease that can be seen in case of nursery beds. So, whenever this disease is observed in the nursery beds, so this leads to poor seed germination as well as poor stand of seedlings. So, whenever the disease severity is higher or whenever the conditions are favorable for the pathogen, then that losses may go even up to 75%. So, let us see what are the etiology of this disease. The disease is caused by a oomycetes fungus and this pathogen belongs to the family Pythiaceae and the damping off is incited by a number of Pythium species. Among these Pythium species, the most important ones include Pythium affinidermatum, so, Pythium debarianum and Pythium ultimum. However, among these three species, Pythium affinidermatum is very, very important. So, let us see what are the morphological characters based on which we can diagnose the Pythium affinidermatum. So, the Pythium affinidermatum, as it belongs to Mastigomycotina, the mycelium is sinusitic. So, what do you mean by sinusitic? So, whenever the septa is absent in the hypha, it can be called as a sinusitic hypha. So, this pathogen in its sexual stage, this is capable of producing oospores, spores, which are the resistant spores, which will help in the survival of the fungus. So, these oospores spores are produced as a resultant of gametangial contact between the oogonium and the antheridium. That is, the type of sexual reproduction is known as gametangial contact and here as the antheridium, which is the male gametangia, is attached to the female gametangia laterally, it can be called as Paragynous antheridium. So, on sexual reproduction, there will be production of thick walled spores which are known as oospores. spores. So, these oospores spores are usually produced during unfavorable conditions which will help in the survival of the fungus. So, whenever favorable conditions return, in such cases, the oospores spores germinate, they give rise to a sporangium and from the sporangium, a vesicle is produced in which the juice spore differentiation occurs. That is here a crop of juice spores which are known as the asexual spores are produced in a vesicle that is produced on a sporangium. And the distinguishing feature of the sporangium that is seen in Pythium affinidermatum is that toruloid sporangia are produced. So what do you mean by toruloid sporangia? So this toruloid means elongated sporangia which are constructed at certain places which can be called as toruloid sporangia which is a characteristic feature that can be observed in case of Pythium affinidermatum. That is here two types of spores are produced that is during unfavorable conditions oospores spores are produced which germinate under favorable conditions giving rise to juice spores and these juice spores help in the horizontal transmission of the disease. That is the plant to plant transmission occurs through the juice spores which are disseminated through the irrigation water. So, what are the favorable conditions for the disease? So, coming to the favorable conditions of the disease, the disease can be seen 
in high soil moisture conditions. So how these soil moisture conditions or high soil moisture conditions are created? So whenever there are heavy rainfalls or whenever there is excess irrigation, in such cases high soil moisture conditions prevail. So whenever high soil moisture conditions prevail, the woe spores present in the soil, they germinate giving rise to the juice pores which will cause the primary infection. So the high soil moisture conditions whenever they are created in the nursery beds which may be because of heavy rainfall or which may be because of uncontrolled irrigation or which may be because of the use of high seed rate that is whenever you go for high seed rate which is which leads to the production of a more number of seedlings which are lanky in their growth and which leads to the prevalence of high moisture conditions in the seedling canopy which is conducive for the development of the disease. That is, whenever high soil moisture conditions prevail with moderate temperatures of about 25 degrees centigrade, in such cases these conditions are favorable for the pathogen and the disease incidence occurs. So let us see what are the diagnostic symptoms of the disease. So the diagnostic symptoms can be observed only in case of nursery beds because only the young seedlings are susceptible for the pathogen. So here, the disease can be seen in two phases. One can be known as pre-emergence damping off. The other one is known as post-emergence damping off. That is, in case of pre-emergence damping off, the seed gets attacked by the pathogen and it germinates but the seedling doesn't come out of the soil. So in such cases, it can be called as pre-emergence damping off. So whenever there is pre-emergence damping off, it leads to poor seed germination. So the number of seedlings that are produced are very less in case of pre-emergence damping off. Whereas the post-emergence damping off can be observed whenever the seedlings come out of the soil. And here in case of post-emergence damping off, the seedlings are attacked at the collar region. The infected tissues are rotten and the seedlings collapse on the seed bed. So, which can be called as post-emergence damping off, which will lead to poor stand of seedlings. So, let us see how the disease advances and where the pathogen infects your seedlings. So, initially the pathogen infects the collar region, that is the region where the root system and the shoot system are attached is known as the collar region. So, the pathogens, they infect primarily at the collar region and slowly the pathogen invades all the collar tissues. So whenever the collar tissues are infected, the pathogen rots the infected tissue and the seedling collapse on the nursery bed. So whenever number of seedlings collapse under high soil moisture conditions, you can observe the development of whitish mycelium on the collapsed seedlings, which is a distinguishing feature of post-emergence damping off. So, when you go to the field and when you observe the nursery bed, if you observe a number of gaps in the seedlings, so it is an indication of post-emergence damping off, which is caused by epithelium affinidermatum. So, what are the management practices to be followed for the management of this disease? So, we know that the disease prevails under high soil moisture conditions. That's why you shouldn't go for flat bed planting where water stagnation can occur. So always the seedlings need to be raised only on raised beds of approximately 15 centimeters high. Because whenever you irrigate the nursery bed, the water will drain easily so that high soil moisture condition doesn't prevail in case of raised beds. So definitely whenever you want to raise the nursery in case of chili, definitely it should be raised on a raised bed of approximately 15 centimeters high so that the disease incidence can be reduced. And the other important feature where the damping off occurs is whenever the inoculum is present in the soil. So you should devise certain management practices which can reduce the inoculum that is seen in the nursery bed. So here the inoculum that is present in the nursery bed can be reduced by means of rabbing. So what do you mean by rabbing? Rabbing is nothing but burning the farm thrash on the surface of the beds. That is, whenever you burn the farm thrash on the surface of the beds, here the inoculum of the pathogen that is present in the upper surface of the soil can be minimized. So this practice needs to be followed before sowing. So the inoculum that is present in the soil can also be reduced 
whenever you go for soil solarization. So the soil solarization is nothing but hydrothermal heating of the soil by covering the nursery bed with a clear or transparent polyethylene sheet. So whenever you cover the soil with a transparent polyethylene sheet, the sun rays, they are penetrated into the soil, thereby increasing the temperature of the soil by at least 5 degrees centigrade so that the inoculum that is present in the soil is degraded. And we should take care of the seed rate. So whenever you go for high seed rate, in such cases, more number of seedlings are produced on the nursery bed and whenever more number of seedlings are produced, they grow very lanky, that is, the stems are very thin and they are easily susceptible to the pathogen. Hence, the use of optimum seed rate is very, very important and the optimum seed rate should be 650 grams per cent area, which the seedlings obtained from this nursery bed can be utilized for transplanting in the main field in one acre of area. So, the maintenance of optimum seed rate or the use of optimum seed rate definitely reduces the disease that is the damping of disease. So whenever the seed is not protected with a fungicide, definitely it leads to the invasion by the Pithium aphanidum. That's why while going for planting of your seed, in such cases the seed need to be treated with fungicides like Capthon or Thyram at 2 to 3 grams per kg seed. Alternatively, the, tree, the seed can also be treated with biocontrol agents like Trichoderma viridae and Trichoderma hargia. So whenever you use Trichoderma formulations, usually 6 grams of the formulation should be used for 1 kg seed. That is, you need to treat the seed with Trichoderma viridae formulation at 6 grams per kg seed. Alternatively, you can also apply the Trichoderma to the seed bed prior to the plant. So here, if you want to apply the, the Trichoderma to the soil or the nursery bed, it should be applied along with the farmyard manure to the nursery bed so that the farmyard manure acts as a base for the multiplication of these biocontrol agents and thereby they suppress the inoculum that is present in the nursery bed. Apart from seed treatment, the chemical fungicides can also be used for drenching the nursery beds. The chemical fungicides like Bodo mixture or Caproxy chloride or metalaxyl can be used for drenching the nursery beds. So, the chemical fungicide like Bodo mixture, which is a preparatory copper fungicide, need to be used at 10 ml per liter of water. Or proprietary copper fungicides like copper oxychloride can be used at 3 grams per liter of water. Or systemic fungicide belonging to acylalanine group, which is known as metalaxyl, can be used at 2 grams per liter of water. So, when you need to go for soil drenching, the soil drenching can be done prior to sowing or 10 days after the emergence of the seedlings. Whenever you go for drenching with these chemical fungicides, the damping of disease can be effectively managed. And while going for growing nurseries, it is very safe to grow nurseries in pro trays in polyhouses because here artificial soil mixer will be used where this is free of the pathogen. So whenever the seedlings are raised in pro trays in polyhouses, these seedlings are free of the disease and they can be easily or safely planted in the main field so that the disease incidence is completely reduced. So here following certain cultural practices like rabbing or use of optimum seed rate or using raised beds for raising the nursery seedlings and even seed treatment with certain fungicides and biocontrol agents and going for protective or going for raising of the seedlings in protective nurseries or the protrays can minimize the disease that is caused by Pythium aphanidermis.